when people put their finances and put their resources where they say their politics lies, it makes a huge difference um, in the life of not just the writer or the artist or whoever that you're investing in, but in the lives of the society that you want to build. I don't come from a kind of background that regularly produces writers. Um, you know, no one I grew up with uh, even remotely dreamed of becoming a writer. You know, books were, were some for us, for my family and, and the people I, I, um, I grew up with were something that, uh, that belonged to libraries. They, were, they felt so distant and dominated by, by people sort of you know, more privileged and, 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 and more sophisticated than we were. As UEA celebrates 50 years of award-winning global literature, we're proud to launch the International Chair of Creative Writing and the Global Voices Scholarship Program. We believe contemporary writing should be without borders, boundaries and prejudices. So over the next five years, we want to name five high-profile writers from five territories, Africa, the Americas, Asia, Australasia and the Middle East as our international chair for one year each. With the support of one visionary philanthropist, we've already appointed our first chair, Zitsi Dangaramga, whose objective will be to find, nurture, and promote vital new African voices. We'll also be welcoming the first of our 50 Global Voices Scholarship students. 10 students from the continent of Africa will arrive at UEA to study on our world-beating MA program, to be followed in the coming years by 40 more from the remaining territories. But none of this will be possible without further philanthropic support. Will you help change the faces and voices of global literature for the next 50 years? Here is Sitsi to tell you more. In my role as International Chair of Creative Writing, I want to make sure I offer some high quality learning opportunities to young writers on the continent. When people who write from the continent present their view, that world is no longer unfamiliar. People are familiar with the world. So there's been a tremendous opening up. There's so many people who are talented that you never know. You never hear about them, why? Because they just couldn't do it. You know, they couldn't completely flip their lives around in service of the work. My scholarship was absolutely fundamental um, in my development um, as a writer. I wasn't, wasn't able to kind of afford the course at the time, so I would very likely have gone back to Singapore and done a law conversion and I'd be a lawyer unhappily um, trying to write stories on the side. I received the UA Broker Prize for additional scholarship. I first heard the news after I had finished teaching a math class and I ran to find my mother to inform her about it. I never ever thought I would ever receive such a prestigious scholarship. The, the thing is, these scholarships and bursaries actually do make a, a life-changing difference um, in terms of timing, in terms of opportunity for, for various different writers from all over the world um, and in the UK as well. Um, and I think, I think what we need to do is really focus on nurturing that talent and supporting it um, in any way that we can. Through all these supports, they help to bring to the public stage the stories of diverse and marginalized communities. And it's, it's only when these stories are heard that change can happen. Fifty years from now, we will still feel the intense importance of the act of reading and of reading imagined stories and of its importance as an act of radical empathy for people who are very different from ourselves. <laughs>